There are many great ways to finish your cakes using basic buttercream. In this video, I'll show you three techniques, pressed pearl, ruffles, and rosettes. I'm starting with a cake that's already been split, filled, and crumb coated. When working with these buttercream effects, it's key to use a homemade Swiss meringue buttercream. Canned frosting doesn't really set up or hold its shape the way that a homemade real buttercream does. The first effect I'm going to work on is pearls. I have a pastry bag fitted with a number 806 round piping tip. To start my first pearl, I'll point the pastry tip at the cake and apply pressure until the pearl is about half the size that I want it to be. Release pressure and then pull the tip away. If the pearl doesn't turn out the way that you want it to or you have a little tip left, dip your finger in water and then gently smooth out the pearl. Now I'm going to pipe a line of these up the side of the cake. So it's squeeze, release, pull away. These are big chunky pearls that I'm piping onto the side of this cake, but you can do this with any size tip. Once you've mastered piping pearls, you can move on to another technique that I call pressed pearls using this same piping tip and a small spatula. This technique makes the pearls look like little fish scales. Starting halfway across the pearl, press down and pull forward. Clean off your spatula as needed. Again, I'm going to press down and pull, press and pull, and press and pull working your way up the side of the cake. To start my next row of pressed pearls, I'll pipe halfway through the smear of the first pearl that I just created. And I'll repeat this press and pull technique around the sides of my cake. Now that I've finished my pressed pearls all around the edges of my cake, I'm just going to finish the cake with a row of pearls. So now I'm going to go back in with a little bit of water in my finger just to round over the tops of the pearls. And there you have your pressed pearl cake. You can put it back in the fridge and let it set up for about an hour or so before moving to a cake stand. Another simple and popular way to cover a cake with a buttercream finish is ruffles. For this technique, I have my pastry bag again fitted with a leaf tip size 114. The leaf tip is wider at one end than the other and has a little V cut out of the top. To start your ruffle, you're going to hold the tip so that the wide part of the tip is parallel to the cake. Apply pressure to the piping bag and then move the tip back and forth to and from the side of the cake. Now that I've finished a row, I'm just going to keep moving up the sides of the cake until I get to the top. For tighter ruffles, move the tip back and forth quickly. For looser ruffles, move the tip more slowly. Once I've finished this last row of ruffles, I'll leave the top of my cake smooth and just return it to the fridge just like I did with the first cake, for about two hours until it's set. Finally, we'll do rosettes. I have my pastry bag filled with buttercream and fitted with a star tip number 826. To pipe my rosette, I'll point the tip of the pastry bag towards the cake, apply pressure, and then move in a clockwise motion around where I started. When I get to the edge of my rosette, I'll release pressure and allow the buttercream to trail off in a circle, continuing the rosette. I'll try this again. 
you want to point the tip of your pastry bag in the center of where you want your finished rosette to be. Apply pressure and move around in a clockwise motion. You can apply the rosette sparingly or cover the entire cake for a really dramatic and beautiful effect. To finish the cake, I'm going to apply a row of rosettes around the edges and then finish with one in the center. If you're working on a tiered cake, you have two options. You can stack the cakes first, and that way when you do your buttercream effect, it'll kind of flow over the edges, making a seamless effect or you can finish the cake separately and then stack them if you want to do different effects on different tiers.